Good morning, St. Peter's. I'm glad that you've joined us this morning on our live stream for worship. And happy Mother's Day uh, to mothers uh, who are out there this morning watching, uh, hopefully having a, a great morning with your family. Uh, the bulletin for today's service can be found on our website and in the comments if you're watching this live on Facebook right now. If you're joining us for the first time this morning, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, I wish we could uh, uh, shake your hand and uh, say hello and, and get to learn a little bit more about you uh, and give you some of our, uh, our coffee. We have a St. Peter's Blend coffee that we give our newcomers to take home. Uh, but this morning, if you would go to our website and under About, you'll see Connect Card. You can fill that out for us. It doesn't put you on a mailing list or anything like that. It just helps us to reach out and connect with you better this week. Now let's take uh, just a moment to center our hearts before we begin.
Good morning again, St. Peter's. I'm glad that you have all joined us this morning as we worship together. Uh, the bulletin is found on our website and in the comments if you're watching live on Facebook. Uh, just a couple of announcements, uh, and these are all found on the last page of the bulletin as well. So go and take a look, uh, see what's there. You have links, all sorts of things. Uh, and we'll post links uh, to announcements uh, towards the end of the service uh, and, and now as well. Uh, virtual VBS registration is open. Uh, I just want to say I am incredibly proud of our children's ministry team. Uh, they have had to turn on a dime. Uh, the VBS plan that we had, that we've had in place for months, uh, is not going to work now, uh, and they have come up with something amazing. Uh, the theme is finding your way through the wilderness. Uh, so uh, walking with the people of Israel through. Uh, that wilderness, uh, going to the promised land, it's going to be amazing. A virtual VBS, uh, who'd ever have thought that's where we'd be right now, but it will be good. Uh, registration is open for that. The first 25 who sign up uh, get in free, and after that, uh, I, believe, I believe it's $10 a person. Someone check me on that. $15. $15. $15. Uh, next Sunday, we are offering communion pickup. Uh, so after the live stream service next Sunday, the clergy will be out on College Street for an hour, uh, and we will have communion available for you to pick up there. You do need to sign up uh, to come and do that. There's uh, a link that uh, we have sent to you for that. Uh, sign up and let us know if you would like to uh, pick up communion to receive at home uh, next Sunday, the 17th. Uh, and then finally, there's a list in our bulletin of all of our virtual offerings right now. Uh, we have a lot going on. Uh, music Mondays, Friday night pipes. Uh, we're offering a prayer call every Wednesday. Um, offerings for children and youth. So much. Uh, take a look at all of our virtual offerings. And please, as always, remember to fill the little free pantry. Uh, that's down in our parking lot. It's getting a lot of use right now. Uh, and finally, a uh, happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, uh, I hope that uh, mothers, you are getting to spend a little bit of time with your uh, children today and children with your mothers. I also recognize that Mother's Day isn't the easiest day for everyone, especially those who have lost their mothers or uh, parents and children who don't have a good relationship. Uh, and so I, I want you to know that wherever you're at with this Mother's Day, whether it's joy or pain, uh, we are praying with you and here for you. Let's begin in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the mothers in our lives and for those women who have uh, had a powerful impact on us those who have strengthened us when we were down, those who have cared for us when we were in need, those who uh, have given us an example to live by. We give you thanks for them and we ask you to bless them uh, that all of us might know through their love the depth of your love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is 210, the day of resurrection. The words can be found in your bulletin, or if you have a hymnal at home and want to go pull that out, it's number 210, the day of resurrection.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our hymn of praise is 175, verse 5. That's Hail Thee Festival Day. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have a catalog of memories of different youth group kids from different churches where I have served. I have memories of them on ski retreats, mission trips, camping trips, whitewater rafting, confirmation services, Bible studies. I remember a girl running and laughing during a water fight at the end of a car wash. I can still see her standing in the church parking lot, leaning over, catching her breath and smiling. That girl grew up, 
built a career, married, and last month contracted COVID-19. It took her life. I have heard parents who have lost a child say, you're not supposed to outlive your child. I think all of us who work with children and youth would say the same about the kids we teach and lead. We're not supposed to outlive them. Last week, a close friend, my daughter's godfather, was rushed to the hospital in the middle of the night and diagnosed with COVID-19. He has MS, so his body is already weakened. His wife tells me his CO2 levels are improving and he is now able to sit up and eat. I have hope that he will continue to grow stronger, but I still worry. I feel like I'm stuck in a traffic jam of grief and worry with no off-ramp in sight. Perhaps you do too. During this pandemic, some of you mourn the death of someone that mattered to you. Others mourn a lost opportunity. You are worried for families and friends exposed to COVID-19. Or you're concerned for parents and grandparents living in assisted living homes and nursing homes. Some of you are worried about losing your job or making ends meet because your pay has been cut. Young parents are overwhelmed trying to work full-time jobs while caring for children full-time. Most of us miss the way things used to be just a few months ago. The Psalms are a great place to turn when we are anxious and when we grieve. About a third of all the psalms are psalms of the men that express sorrow, worry, and even fear. When we read them, they seem to speak to us and for us. They tell God how we feel when we struggle to find the words. The psalmist says, incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. It's an urgent plea for safety. The words are poetic. The imagery is strong. The psalmist imagines a castle, a fortress, and himself in it. It's God's fortress. And that means he doesn't have to man the ramparts. God's angels are already striding along the fortress walls. If we were to put the Psalms poetry into plain language, it could be a plea spoken by a grocery clerk stocking shelves, by a healthcare worker stepping through a hospital door, by a grown child peeking through a mom's nursing home window on Mother's Day. By a parent tucking in a child. These words could be a plea for our safety. The writer of the psalm says he chooses to put his trust in God. God is his stronghold. There are many things we can put our trust in during this pandemic. Two of my favorites, Clorox and Lysol. But at the top of the list should be God. Clorox and Lysol might help keep our doorknobs and countertops germ-free. But God is where we find our strength. When we are strengthened by God, we have an internal stability. 
even as external threats abound. The psalmist refers to enemies who are plotting to trap him. We don't know much about the psalmist's enemy, and we don't know much about our enemy, the COVID-19 virus. We wash our hands, we wear masks, we stay six feet apart, but that feels so passive. We don't know how to move from a defensive position to an offensive one. You and I, we don't have the expertise to formulate a vaccine or a medicine. There's no recruiting office where we can go to sign up to go to war. That means we may be tempted to look for other enemies that we can fight. I see camps forming and Kosh is beginning, but our enemy is the virus, not one another. The psalmist says, into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Those words may sound familiar. From the cross, Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then he breathed his last. One of the hard truths of Psalm 31 and the cross is that when we cry out for God to save us, we may or may not be spared from death. And even if we are spared from death today, it will come someday. We live in a world that includes viruses, tornadoes, cancer, crashing cars, and all manner of things that can steal away life. God doesn't promise to spare us from death, not our own death, nor the death of someone we love. But God does promise to be with us, and to be our stronghold when death comes near. In the 23rd Psalm, the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's the promise. That's the source of our courage. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The portion of Psalm 31 that we read today ends with a plea for blessing. Make your face shine upon your servant. There are myriad ways that God blesses us even in difficult times. The wife of my friend who is in the hospital always sees the blessings that God scatters in her path. Last week she told me about two of those blessings. She said that that morning a red fox was outside her house and a gift of choco mint chip ice cream was sent from God via a friend. The penultimate blessing that we receive from God is the promise that when we die, we live. Jesus, with his great love, gave his life for us. Through his death and resurrection, we are blessed with new life in heaven. Those we've lost and those we will lose are saved by Jesus' love. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We who believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. If you like, you can add your prayer requests to the comments and so join your prayers with ours. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for this day, for all of its blessings. I pray for the world and for all the challenges that we face. I pray for all those who are in positions of authority, for the president, for governors, for leaders in our community, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions, that they would know what to do, and what to refrain from doing. I pray for the church. I pray for all the leaders in the church who are also making decisions at this time. I pray for our bishop, George, and for our rector, Father Perry. I pray for all the clergy at St. Peter's and all the people of St. Peter's. Father, we pray that no matter where we are in this time, whether we are joyful or anxious, or perhaps both, depending on the day, that wherever we are, you would be with us, that you would help us to live purposely and simply and with peace, no matter what our circumstances are. Father, I pray for your grace, for your loving kindness, and that no matter what happens, we would take refuge in you. This morning, we're praying especially for Bill, Carol, Michael, Daryl, and Kathy, Fred, Charlene, Ron, Sue, Heather, Courtney, Will, Brandy, Mona, Susan, Bonnie, Kate, Vicki, George, Brandy, Tootie, Carol Lee, Brian, Sue Ann, Helen, Vina, Edith, Justin, Kelly and Ben, Dave, Lizanne, Chris, JJ, Ellen, Barb, for Zeta, Patty, Eileen, Clyde, Betty, Sandy, and Pat. We offer thanksgiving for those who are mother figures in our lives, and we pray for the repose of the souls of Debbie, Emma, Betty, Rick, Wanda, 
and fill it. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, like we have the past few weeks, we're going to continue our service with a discussion of today's lessons with myself, Father Perry, and Mother Kathy. So, the watchword for today's psalm and for your sermon uh, is refuge. What does it look like to take refuge in God? So, um, I, I just want to preface this by saying uh, I feel like um, every preacher in the world when I say this, uh, and, and I, I kind of feel like a broken record. Um, there's this, uh, there's this uh, old preaching story, uh, kind of a biting joke actually, about a, a preacher who gets up and preaches the exact same sermon every single Sunday. Uh, and his congregation finally questions, uh, Father, have, can, can you not come up with a new sermon? Uh, his response back is, um, uh, you know, I'll come up with a new sermon when you do what I said in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we, we all often feel like that in our lives, right? We have this, this ideal that we talk about on Sunday mornings and in sermons, and we make a plan for our week in church. Um, we're going to read the Bible. We're going to pray more. We're going to do all these things that are sort of, that are good, but are sort of nebulous, not specific, um, uh, and, and uh, not part of our normal habit, right? And so uh, they don't often happen in a week. We, we might do, you know, one little thing, which is actually a great, good step, uh, but we don't often do the big thing that the preacher said or that we convicted ourselves in our seat that we were going to do that week. Um, but when you talk about refuge, I mean, I turn to the same things over and over again. Read your Bible. Spend time in prayer. Um, uh, uh, spend time worshiping God. That, and that doesn't have to happen here in a building, right? That could be, um, you know, singing through the hymnal on your back patio. That could, that could be anything. Um, it's the same things that, that we're told over and over again that we need to rely on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we're going to do that, we have to be a little bit more specific and we have to be uh, reasonable and realistic uh, and understand that, uh, that we don't have to do everything overnight, that little steps are actually a really good thing. Uh, but I think it's the same things that we always say, right? Pray and read your Bible. That is where I find refuge um, in times of distress. All right. Well, again, 
I think it's helpful to know the signs in our own lives that we're, we're not doing that. For me, that's often a, a panicky feeling or, or a frantic feeling. When I read the Gospels, I, I never see Jesus panic. You know, feed 5,000, no panic. Arrested, no panic. So for me, it's a sign when, when I'm starting to panic that I need to stop. I had a, a college professor that, that told us Always take the time to stare out a window and think thoughts. My dog is better at that than I am, you know, to, to take that time. Your, your dog stares out the window and barks thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true, she does. Um, but to stare out the window, to think thoughts, and then to take those thoughts and offer them up to God in prayer, that's what I need to do more of when I, when I feel that the panic building or, or the anxiety building. And, and that's where, where I begin to find some peace when, when I stop and in your, spend time with God. In your sermon, you used the word, um, the, the phrase, internal stability. Yeah. I really like that. Um, uh, I, I usually, in my mind, when I'm, when I'm trying to describe that thing that you were talking about, that internal peace, stability, whatever it is, um, I usually go to the word contentedness. Um, there's something about being content um, that, that for me, I don't know, it sums it up, right? Like, the world may be crazy right now, and my life may be crazy right now, and I may have no idea where, where any of this is headed, right? And there are a lot of things I could be anxious about. Um, but it's, it's when I spend that time in prayer that you're talking about, I find myself in the midst of all that of uh, being content. <laughs> as, as weird as that sounds, internal stability, contentedness, whatever that is, um, I, I, I think you're onto something there. That's the, the peace that passes all understanding that, that Jesus gives us. It can't come from the world. Uh, because it often comes in the middle of the storms of life, right? Um, it, it comes from, from the one who remains stable when we aren't. And, and I find in myself, again, when, when I don't do that, I, I find myself running in this direction and running in that direction, trying to, to find that stability or, or even control. Yeah. In, in other ways. But when I look to God, that running around stops. Yeah. And, and there's an equilibrium that comes. So you also said um, in the sermon, you talked a little bit about um, where we go to, to find that stability or control or whatever it is when we're not turning to God. Um, and I, I, I think you're really onto something. Um, we are... We are looking to control the situation. And if we don't understand it, then I, I think we tend to um, to want to make statements that are um, clear and black and white and understandable, even though we don't understand what's going on, right? right. It's kind of a coping mechanism for us. Um, so what, what I think what we're saying is, right, the, the church has a, a better coping mechanism than latching on to something that may or may not be true. Mm -hmm. um, the, the coping mechanism is to latch on to the thing that is true, right? The way, the truth, and the life. Um, and, and to let all those other things that we don't understand and that could be true or not, um, to, to let those kind of wash over us and go along, right? Well, thank you. Good discussion. Well... Uh, we want y'all to continue the discussion at home. Um, discuss uh, after the service sometime this week with your family perhaps. Um, what is it that you go to um, when you feel that you need refuge? And what are some ways that God may be calling you this week to seek refuge in Him and not in something else? So that's something to ponder this week.
we turn to the altar, uh, I, I know there are some of you out there who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, uh, and we want to pray with you. The Lord be with you. And also and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, on this, their special day. Watch over them as they begin another year, and give them grace to keep the vows and promises they have made. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Raise them up if they fall. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide in their hearts all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Uh, uh, tell us in the comments what you're celebrating today. Now as we turn to the altar, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice unto God. We continue to offer your gifts on the altar uh, every week. If you've sent in a donation in the last week, uh, it is um, your name is included here in this envelope. Uh, you can also, uh, if you'd like to, uh, to receive envelopes, um, uh, stamped, addressed envelopes, you can email Mariana Pearson, our parish administrator, and she can send those to you. Or if you'd like to make a donation now, you can go to our website and click Give. Or you can text St. Peter's McKinney, that's St. Peter's McKinney, to 73256. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> us to you, the God and Father of all. 
stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Alleluia.
John, Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Gifts of God for the people of God. In union with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I invite you to share your thanksgivings to the Lord. Thank you for mothers. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and an ending peace. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn 690, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. 